Hi, this is Siobhan Print, and I would like to talk to you today about communication channel selection, print, PowerPoint, web, social media. And we're also going to talk about for each of these the benefits and the limitations, plus why multi-channel communication requires a team. So let's get started. One of the biggest questions that people have today is which channel should I use to communicate? We all have limited time and so we ask ourselves, is print the best way to reach our audience? Is it the web? Is it PowerPoint? What about all of the new social medias, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube? Do I need to be using these in the church? Should I use all of the above? or none of the above? These are the questions we ask ourselves. And before we get started into this, let's take a little time out and let me assure you of a few things first. First of all, you do not have to be a techie, a geek, or under 30 to understand this material. Sometimes it can be very intimidating, and I don't want you to be intimidated, really. Any of you can do this. Whoever's watching and listening to this, don't be afraid. This um, whole video, I hope, will greatly encourage you. Also, keep in mind, you don't have to use every tool in the most advanced way possible for it to have an impact. You just don't need to do that. Um, you will always be learning and growing, and so don't worry about perfection in every area. Also, you, and I mean you personally, can do all you need to minister effectively. Either you yourself or a team at your church. You don't have to hire outside people. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. You can learn to do what you need to do because you're called and equipped by the Alpha and the Omega. Remember, our Lord is the one who created the universe. He understands computers. Sometimes we forget that, but we can ask Ask him for wisdom and he will give it to us as we learn about and effectively use all these different tools to reach the people he's called us to reach. Now, how are we going to look at all of this? First of all, I know we all want one simple way to communicate. We see all these different things and we... I, I oftentimes I'll get emails or, or people will talk to me and they'll say, well, tell me, what's the one most important way to do it? And sadly, no one channel is the best, the most useful or the most effective. And we have to be very careful because people will tell you in person or there's a lot of, in all honesty, just junk out on the web by, um, you know, even well-meaning Christian communicators. Well, you absolutely have to do this. You, you just, you have to have the best uh, Twitter feed, you have to have the best Facebook page. Nope, if your church doesn't have the absolutely top-notch website, um, you know, it just isn't any good anymore. Trust me, no one channel is the best, the most useful, or the most effective. We are in a time, and I cannot underscore or emphasize this enough, of multi-channel communications. It is not either or, it is both and. We need to learn how to do all of them effectively. We need to learn what are the pluses, the minuses, the strong points, the weak points of each form of communication. Now, I'm going to give you strategies on how to survive in this crazy world in the rest of this video. Now, the first thing, though, that we need to remember before we get started is that all of our communication, doing it in the church, it's not about us. And remember the Bible tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. It really is, and it is so easy if we like something to think, well, that's the way everybody likes to communicate. And usually that's just not the case at all. So you've got to always keep that in mind. It's not about us. Our preference, what we like best, is not the most important thing thing. We must learn to do multi-channel communications because of our people, because they vary in their access to technology. You might think that an iPad is the greatest communication tool that's ever been invented, and maybe it is. However, how many of your people have access to it? Let's face it, a lot of the latest and greatest technology costs money. I was talking to a lady just the other day um, who is a, a member of this website, and 
I've forgotten she lives in a major metropolitan area, uh, but just enough outside of the town that her church, believe it or not, cannot get high-speed Internet access. Now, I have to admit, I sometimes tend to think, oh, everybody can get that. Well, no, not everybody can. And that's just, that's something that's been around for a long time now, comparatively in, in our whole techie world. But their church can't do it. There's absolutely no way that they can afford it. Um, lots of people can't afford even a fancy cell phone. Uh, you might think, oh, your iPhone or, or some other real high-end BlackBerry or something like that. Oh, that's just the greatest thing and everybody ought to have one. Well, maybe they ought to, but they don't. Um, nowadays, when people are out of work and struggling to pay for groceries, they don't always have the great tool to receive the communication that you have, you're able to create with it. Also, don't forget this, um, literacy rates are still not 100%. And maybe not everybody that you're trying to reach speaks English. You've got to think about some of these different things. This is really important. Again, we're to minister to people, not just to have them all come up to our standards. Also, different people have physical limitations. Can they, um, you know, what's their eyesight like? You know, all of these different things, you've got to think about them. And then different people's skill levels, um, their likes, their dislikes. You know, some people, they just don't like to go online. You know, other people absolutely love it. They live um, with literally um, an iPhone in one hand and a BlackBerry in the other, and they're on the uh, web 99% of the time, or they've always got, um, you know, headphones on, you know, whatever it is, that's just the way it is. So, but other people, they don't want to have anything to do with it. All of them go to your church. So this is something that you constantly have to pray for wisdom and discernment in because we are their servants. We are their pastors, their shepherds. Um, you don't force a sheepy to eat the way you want them to eat just because you happen to like a certain thing. It, it just doesn't work like that. So let's approach all of this in a real spirit of humility and servanthood because that's who we truly are. Okay, let's look now at some people solutions to some of these people challenges. Don't assume who uses what in your church. Survey them. Um, I will have in the notes and associated with this video some links to another video on creating a communication survey. And this is a survey that's designed to find out what people are actually using, not what they want to use or what you think they should use or what they'd like to use, but what are they actually using. J again, just because you really like something, don't assume everybody does. Um, sometimes I've, I've known I was talking with someone the other day who just absolutely loved Facebook and that's great but how many people in your church use it now maybe a lot of them maybe certain groups do maybe some don't I don't know the answers to your church but so survey find out what people are actually using and um, when you do this, make a habit of taking a communication survey at least once a year because people's tastes, um, habits, uses all change. Keep in mind, too, you don't have to create every single channel. This is where a communications team is so valuable because you may not understand something at all and somebody else has a great idea in it. And, you know, everybody has different ideas. And so especially with multi-channel communications, this is where a team is extremely valuable. Now, this doesn't have to be terribly formal. Um, at my church, my husband and I, currently are working with an adult um, uh, education, Bible teaching class, etc. I do a lot of the communications for it, but there's a lady in the class who, she just lives on Facebook, loves Facebook, and so she will take what I'm doing, and even though I, um, I do some social media stuff, she does all of that for the class because she just loves doing it. So that's kind of informal. That's not any real formal thing, and this is just for one area in the church. So, um, you know, 
don't uh, just because you can't do something, don't think that you you won't be able to do it at all. Just ask around, get people involved. People do have skills in the different channels, but don't make assumptions based on age. <clears throat> Remember, a lot of the baby boomers were the ones who actually invented computers. So you might have some people in your church that you wouldn't think of them as being particularly uh, tech savvy, and they might be tremendously tech savvy. Um, and then, you know, don't just assume because someone is younger that they are into all of the social media. They might not like a certain things. So uh, everybody has different areas of expertise in their skills, in their interests, in their understanding. So ask around, um, and you may be very surprised. And I truly believe that everybody can learn how to create in any channel, even if someone doesn't know how to do something right now, doesn't mean with a little training that they won't. So when you're putting together a team, don't make assumptions ahead of time. Ask around, um, provide a little bit of training, and you might be very surprised. Now, let's look at an overview of the different channels. We're going to define them. We're going to talk about how to use them. We're going to talk about the benefits, the limitations, and I'll give you some miscellaneous tips and comments on each of them. Now, this is not a how-to of every single one. There's lots more on the website, EffectiveChurchCom.com, that tells you how to use specific ones. Lots more is coming, but this is more of an overview to help you realize that you do need all of them and also to help you realize that not any one channel will do it all. Let's look at good old print. Please do not do away with your print ministry. It is still the most accessible for many people. And when visitors come to your church, the church bulletin is still a key piece of communication. That is a number one thing. Also, for people actually taking action on what's going on with your church, you can't beat print because it's what ends up on Communication Central, the refrigerator. Nine times out of ten, if there's something in the bulletin that people want to remember to attend, they take it home and they'll stick it on the refrigerator. They'll see that more than your website, than social media, than anything if it's on the refrigerator. So bulletins, bulletin inserts are so important. Also, too, print is how you link to other multimedia through your bulletin, through your inserts. How do people even know that you have a Facebook page or a Twitter feed or your website or anything else? Nine times out of ten, you have to give them the URL, how to get to it in print. So that's very important through your bulletins, your inserts, outreach postcards, sending them out, um, giving them to your people to send to their friends, to even tell them that you have this great website, that you have a YouTube channel, whatever it is. How are they going to find out about it? Usually it's with print. Business invitation cards. These are a great way, once again, to link people to the other forms of media. Now, print, though, does have some challenges. One of the big ones today, it's becoming one of the most expensive ways to communicate. I mean, paper costs are just increasing tremendously. I print up rather extensive handouts for our um, adult education and Bible classes that we do. And my goodness, I just had to buy some paper recently, and I was, I was amazed at how much prices have gone up and keep going up up toner and ink and so many of these things it is an expensive way to communicate but don't let your finances determine your production it's still extremely important and when I teach a Bible class I want people to have written handouts. I don't expect them to remember everything just from the teaching time. So um, we raise money for it. We take up periodic donations for handouts and those kinds of things. And we remember that that's a really important thing to do. But uh, print is not inexpensive. Now, look at alternative ways to do stuff in church. Now, I know most churches today have really good copiers, good color copiers, and those are great. But consider, if you haven't for a long time, look at digital duplicators again. Now, some of you may not even be familiar with them. I know a number of you listening to these years ago, I worked with the Riso Corporation, and 
I've done some work with the Rico Corporation and, and different companies and stuff like that who make digital duplicators. For those of you that are not familiar with them, they're a completely different technology than your color copier. They're ink-based. They are very, very inexpensive to print. Now, um, they're not as crisp and sharp as your copier, but the new ones are, th their quality is just absolutely fantastic. The thing, though, that makes them so useful is they are just dirt cheap to run. Um, where your color copiers, you might have things down to a penny or whatever a copy. Your digital duplicators on long runs are a fraction of a cent to produce. I mean, it's really, really, really inexpensive. So if your church produces a lot of, say, bulletin inserts, throw away things for kids, uh, children's ministry, this is an area where a digital duplicator is so helpful. I would encourage you to check it out. Talk to your local um, office uh, equipment company. That's, that's your best bet. And ask them to, you know, look at it. Figure it out for your church, but that might be an option. For your really fancy, glossy color things, there are great companies online today. The one that I've used a number of times, and I, I know many people in the church have, is Vistaprint. Um, you can, and they're, they're always having specials and uh, stuff like this. If you want to make the slick, glossy, fancy postcards for special events and things like that, uh, Vistaprint, Overnight Print, I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of them online that are, are really, really good. Now, you have to plan ahead a little bit so that you can get them, but you can do the designs. On my website, I have a lot of templates that you can modify, um, but you don't have to buy things from companies like Outreach, and, you know, I think their stuff's outrageously overpriced, and, you know, people have all the same things, and, you know, I, d I don't recommend companies like that, but you can do them, and check out Vistaprint if you, if you haven't in the past. I think you'll um, be very happy with the kind of things that they have available. So, uh, print is still one of the most useful things, and probably will be for quite a long time. Now, PowerPoint is a way that we communicate in the church. It is very useful for impact. Um, it's expected for worship in, in many, many churches today. They uh, project the words of songs and they have very moving videos and things like that. Uh, very useful for emotional worship impact. However, PowerPoint is extremely limited, much more so than many people realize because people do not remember details. Now here we might have a typical announcement slide, Easter sunrise service, and then the details. Do you think anybody is going to remember the address from seeing it on a PowerPoint slide? Of course they won't. If you don't have this exact information reproduced in your bulletin, preferably on an insert that people can take out and post on the refrigerator or a little card or anything like that that they can take with them, they will not remember it. And I have had church after church tell me that, oh, we put everything on our, our announcements and our PowerPoint, but, you know, people just don't show up for things and they just might, must not care anymore. That's not true. They see it. But they don't remember the details. And nobody's going to pull out a paper and pencil while they're standing up, you know, maybe after the songs or whatever, and scribble down the details. You have to print those things up for people. So PowerPoint's great. I'm not saying don't use it. I mean, I'm doing this lesson with PowerPoint. It's very useful. But it has, like everything else, its own limitations. And it's also very useful for teaching. I've kind of developed some systems for teaching with it in Sunday school class, and it's kind of on my to-do to -do list to uh, do a little video on how I use it, and, and that will be coming. But um, just keep in mind that PowerPoint is very useful, but it has limitations. Now, websites. They're not optional anymore, and they're not impressive. Uh, five, six years ago, if a church had a website, it's, oh, wow, our church has a website. Nobody's impressed anymore. 
it's expected that you have a website. I mean, your plumber probably has a website. Um, and that's not diminishing plumbers at all. I mean, everybody has a website today. But just because you have one doesn't mean that it's useful or meaningful or impressive. It has to be up to date. That is the most number one important thing. Um, if a website is not up to date, it's not useful. We use websites today like we did yellow pages in the past or anything like that. We go there for information. People do not go to your website for their multimedia thrill of the week. They just don't do that. Um, so, you know, make it useful, make it up to date. It's also very important that your website link to areas for more information. Um, for example, just in the church, you can, in your bulletin, talk about, say, a work day. Have a link on your website then that tells the exact directions, how to get there, what tools to bring, what you hope to accomplish, perhaps the background of the group you're working with. You see, all of these things you can go into more depth on the website. Also for Christian resources, on the bulletin inserts that I recommend that you give out to people as follow-ups for holidays, link to apologetic websites, websites where they can explore the Christian faith. This can be a marvelous way to extend your communication outreach. And then if you have those websites easily accessible, links to them from your church website, it makes it even more useful. So don't don't just think that having a website, oh, wow, isn't that cool? No, that's not cool. It has to actually be a useful tool. Now, design of your website is not what is most important, and you'll see all kinds of people on the web that disagree with me on this. Most of them are just trying to sell you a system, and that is not what is the most important thing. Information is. Now, if the design serves the information, that's one thing. But design, just for the sake of design and these great graphics and all of that, that is not what is the most important thing. Access is important. Information is. Can it be accessed, number one today, through their mobile phone? Now, what is really challenging is mobile phone access is making some design useless and unnecessary on church websites. People will not always be sitting at a desk with a big computer screen to look at all these great, wonderful um, graphic images that you have on the home page of your website. And if they try to access the website to look up something, maybe they're on their way somewhere and they forgot the address, they try to look it up on your church website. If all they're confronted with is just a mess of graphics that they can't easily link to, it's useless. So use a system that integrates with mobile phone access. This is one of the things that I love about WordPress. WordPress automatically, it's part of the program and it's completely free, will um, put your website in a format that's mobile phone accessible. It looks great. It's easy to see on the mobile phones. And so if your church website is... If you can't ac access it with mobile phones, you've got to either have another site that is accessible or completely change your site. Test the access. Right now, maybe even stop this video. Those of you that um, uh, have a fancy website, borrow somebody's mobile phone, use your own, and see how accessible it is through it. If you can't immediately find what you need, you really need to do some work because this is a huge channel of communication for people today. And once again, I don't care what your site looks like, if it's not accessible through a mobile home, it, home <laughs> through a mobile phone, it's useless. Okay, on websites, you really must learn to do and to modify your own. This, I'm, I'm even talking to pastors, you really need to understand how websites 
work. Not that you get into coding them, not that you get into really advanced detailed things, but this is such a tool today that you need to at least understand how they work. Um, just having one person updating them can be a real problem. First of all, uh, you can think that they're much more complicated than they are. They, they really are not terribly complicated uh, just to update them and things like that. And two, if everything is just funneled through one person, uh, you it's almost guaranteed that things will not be up to date. So this is, this is one of the reasons. This is another reason why I strongly recommend WordPress. This system, and I have um, numerous additional articles, videos, all sorts of things on the Effective Church.com website that tell you how to use WordPress, but it is a system that anyone can update, anyone can access, and I have had uh, numerous people email me, uh, you know, elderly, retired people saying, yeah, I didn't know it was that easy. Um, pastors who have, you know, just didn't know that they could do it. Just all sorts of folks just saying, you know, WordPress really is simple. So think about something like that to at least understand how websites work. Um, learn to create a website with WordPress, even the basics, and it will just empower you to understand the whole system so much better. You won't be intimidated. And if you switch your church website to WordPress instead of paying for some expensive thing, you'll save a ton of money. The basic words, uh, uh, websites through WordPress do not cost you one single penny. And you can have a very effective, very extensive website just using that system. You can upgrade and you can do all sorts of different things, but uh, WordPress is a great way to get started learning this. And again, um, on the website, there's more information about it. Email, of course, is so basic. Everybody, almost everybody today uses email. It's expected. Your congregation expects the pastors to respond to their email, but it's so often misused because I cannot tell you how many churches uh, have email addresses published, but they're not answered. This is a huge, huge, huge pastoral no-no in addition to just being really bad manners. Um, you don't publish an email address and then not have anybody answer the emails. And this is, this is huge. Um, if a pastor is not going to answer his or her own emails, do not post an email address. Um, my, in our, our house, my husband's a bivocational pastor. Uh, he just, now he... He now reads email and he knows how to do some uh, basic research on the web, but he just, he isn't into email. So we don't even post a separate address for him. Um, I answer all his emails. I tell people, you know, this is from Pastor Paul to you, but we don't, you know, post his email anywhere so it's not frustrating to people. So please do be careful of this. It's, that's very, very important. Um, on email newsletters, bulletins, some people say, well, should I quit uh, printing it? You said, you know, stuff's expensive. Should I just do it via email? These sorts of things can be tremendously effective, but don't make them your only source of communication. Again, for um, email, newsletters, bulletins, etc., yes, they're wonderful, but in most churches today, don't stop doing the print one also, or at least making, especially in the case of newsletters, at least some print versions available. I very strongly believe that every church still needs to do a printed bulletin, and there are um, uh, resources, and, and I even have a book on the web on, on my website on why you should still do a print bulletin. Again, an online one an email one, a PDF one on the website, I think is also a very, very good idea. But this is a key area where it's both and, not either or. Now, for email for your congregation, uh, there are lots and lots and lots of resources. The one I use is Constant Contact. This has probably been around, you know, one of the longest. Again, there are many others, but this is the one that I can speak um, uh, 
most about because I'm just really familiar with it. It is a great resource for sending out email newsletters, um, notes to your congregation, etc. All of you that responded to my email newsletter, I send it out through Constant Contact. It is very, very inexpensive. Um, it's only $15 a month for up to 500 names on your mailing list. And you can send out unlimited emails. You can send out just as many notices, newsletters, whatever, for that $15 a month. And it's it's just a resource that I would highly recommend. Um, their URL is www.constantcontact.com. There's lots of tutorials on it. Uh, really quite simple to use if you spend just a little bit of time becoming familiar with it. Now, just a few words about the social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. Don't have them just to say you have them. Um, you know, don't have a church Facebook page or a Twitter feed or a YouTube channel if you never post to it. Um, you've you've got to use them if you're going to um, if you're going to have them and put useful content on them for people. One of the best resources that's really helped me uh, in these areas, it's, this is a totally secular book, it's for salespeople, but it just gave me a whole new vision of how to use this material. It's a book called Social Boom by Jeffrey Gittimer, it's available on Amazon or whatever, but it was so helpful and, and the key thing that he says in that book is to provide value messages and people will connect with you. Um, he doesn't try to sell you. He doesn't try to, um, you know, whatever. He just shares his thoughts, his wisdom. For him, it's on how to sell effectively. Um, for your church, it, you know, how to find peace with God, how to study the Bible. Uh, just really mastering your content, sharing that, saying things of value, and then letting people know you're there. And it, it's, it's really, I think, a wise approach and one I would strongly recommend in these areas. And again, this is an area where I uh, get people involved that love doing it. Some people are, are really into these different areas of social media and can be very helpful. Don't forget, though, that the most important channel of all of any of these things that we talked about is your people. Um, your people can either make every single channel successful or they can destroy all your other communications. I often think about how we need to inspire our people because we don't want our people's reaction to visitors and uh, newcomers to the church to uh, undercut and sabotage all the things that we're doing them. Uh, that we're doing to support the church. I often think about this little poem that I learned many years ago where uh, it says, you're writing a gospel a chapter a day by the things that you do and the things that you say. People read what you write, distorted or true. What is the gospel according to you? And no matter what we do on the web, in print, in our social media, it's still what is it like according to us? What will people experience when they meet the people in your church? So inspire all of your people that they are the very best communicators of what the gospel is like, what your church is like, and also equip them. Um, have a good website, have invitations, have business cards, emails that they can use to pass on to their friends, to share with what your church is doing, to link them to events. Check out what you do already. What I mean by that is have a secret caller or visitors who actually come to your church and see what's it like when somebody walks in the door. What are the greeters like? What are people in your congregation like? Call your church. Now, if all your church has is just mechanical answering systems, I know everybody's busy, but if, they, if people leave a message, does someone call back? If there's a person, and you can get volunteers to answer the phone, are they cheery? Are they upbeat? Are they helpful? I will never forget a while back I called a church to find out about something, and I'm not making this up. The lady, I called her, and she sounded kind of cranky when she answered, and I thought, oh, well, whatever. And then I asked her about a particular program that I needed to find information about, and she literally said, I don't know anything about that. 
Nobody ever tells me anything. That's just how it is around here. Nobody tells you anything about anything. And she went on and she went on. And, I mean, it was very unpleasant. And um, I thought, goodness gracious, what if I was a person that was in real spiritual and emotional trauma or need? Um, Check those things out. I cannot tell you um, how many times I've gone up to a church that I was visiting. And my husband and I visit periodically because I like to look at different churches' communications and things like that. How often, and this has actually been what I have um, seen, it's, it's more generally what happens than what doesn't happen, is to go up to a quote-unquote visitor center and either be, number one, totally ignored, or two, uh, watching people chit-chatting with their friends there and uh, just either sort of giving me the brush off or, oh, you know, here it is or whatever. In all honesty, uh, there have been very, very few instances where someone actually reached out and said, you know, now how can I really help you? Do you have any questions that I can answer? These are not little things. Uh, your people are your most important communication channel. Remind them of that, equip them, and pray that they represent your church and the Lord well. The newest channel, of course, that we need to keep in mind are your iPads and tablet devices. I don't want to end without giving you a little bit of sort of what's on the horizon. Actually, it's already here, but um, not very many people have access to them. And also your Kindles and your e-readers. This is huge. I do think this is... Um, probably the one thing that is going to in the coming years absolutely change everything that we do um, a friend of mine asked me a question a while back and there's an article on the website on this that I think you'll find rather thought-provoking where he said what will you do when an iPad costs $40 um, you know there are hundreds now but costs will keep coming down. What will we do with our communication when everybody has access to one? Now, I do have some more um, materials coming on this, but don't let your excitement uh, deceive you. If you've got one, that's wonderful, but once again, don't think that everybody has them, that everybody can afford them. Uh, you might absolutely love it, and it might be wonderful, but um, don't you know? Don't think everybody has them yet. At the same time, uh, we do need to make our material accessible in this channel also. And like I said, I'm I'm actually working on some stuff. I'm converting a lot of my things to e-reader format. And uh, perhaps when you see this, or within a few months, I will have some more material out on this. But this is the latest and the greatest. This is coming. Be prepared for it. Just in summary and review, there is no one perfect tool. Not now, not ever. Um, there's always going to be something new. And we will always need to do all of them to be all things to all people that we might reach some. Because our audience will always be at different places along the spectrum of adaptation. We... We will never come to a time where everybody just uses one thing and that's it. So just we, we've just got to get used to that. Um, there's lots, lots more on all of these different channels on this whole multi-channel approach on the website, EffectiveChurchCom.com. And I have a resources sheet that will go along with this video for members that um, will link you to some of the different things. Keep praying for wisdom as you do all of the different channels. And remember that the Lord who created the galaxies, who created our world, who created all of these extraordinary things, remember that he loves you and that he will help you do all that he has called you to do in every imaginable communication channel that's available to us now and forever. May the Lord greatly bless you as you work for him today in church communications.